Hello and welcome to the Analyst Inside Cricket, an association with LV Insurance. The sponsors, uh, will they be happy with England today? Uh, England really struggling to take wickets. Only three wickets fell in the day's play. It was a little bit of an abbreviated day. They went off the bad light about 20 minutes early with India 270 for three. So uh, a totally different spin on the day's play. I said yes, I didn't I? I think that uh, India would get bowled out for about 300 and England would chase 200 to win. That's looking a little bit optimistic, isn't it, Simon? Well, you shouldn't have made predictions. We said we should make well, predictions it's just about this fun. series. You know. <laughs> right. I, I'm going to say something about the, the, this day. But is this the, the decisive day in the series? Is this the day that India sort of finally took hold, took a, a grip on this series? I know there's one test match to come and England could come back. And of course, they could come back in this test match. But it feels as if India are moving towards a match-winning position in this game. Of course, it could all unravel for them in the morning. They lose early wickets against a relatively new ball. But they have built a really strong base in the game. 171 ahead. Seven wickets left. Kohli looking determined. There's the pant factor. Shadow Taka to come. Rahani. And there's still some batting to come. What can England chase in the fourth innings? Well, we're going to find out what they're going to be set uh, tomorrow because England will be batting before the close of play. I'm absolutely sure of that. And the task ahead of them could be a really difficult one. Mm. OK, well, let's, um, let's have a look at the who's winning graphic today because uh, it's certainly uh, seen some changes. Uh, if we just have a look at the, the percentages. So yesterday we left it with England's percentage win chance at about 60% or something and India's at about 50 and a 10% chance of a draw. But now uh, the numbers or the, the lines have switched over midway through the morning with that Indian opening stand looking solid. The Indians are slightly ahead now and at the end of the day uh, more like a 60% chance of an Indian win and only a 30% chance of an England win and even the draws just sort of come up slightly I think that's the, the, the least likely obviously but you know interesting how it's changed with that Indian opening stand Rohit Sharma first hundred outside India and actually what a shot to get to it as well uh, going for uh, the the big six over long on with the man back on 94 I remember Kevin Peterson doing something similar and uh, and rather uh, failing you know, an Ashes Test match. In fact, no, I think it was against South Africa, wasn't it? At Edgebaston. And I think he yeah. also did it in an Ashes Test match as well. But um, Rohit Sharma, the, the star of the day, undoubtedly. And as you can see from that graphic, India, therefore, in a very good position. So what can in England do about it? And can they have any hopes of managing to, to change the, the tenor of this match? Uh, the lead, as you say, 171. So they can't really afford to concede more than another 100, would you say? 270, can they chase 270 on there? In a way, the longer that India bat, the more their bowlers will have recovered and will feel more sprightly. And obviously, scoreboard pressure as well will come to their aid. Yeah, and to me, India in control of the game. And unless they get rolled in the morning, and that's the one thing I, I, you can see in England's favour, if they, you know, they were to knock out the last seven wickets for... 50 or 60 runs, then you feel the, the psychology of the game would change again. You feel England have got a chance of, of winning the match. But, you know, if Kohli and whoever just, just take that Indian innings forward, I mean, I, at the close of play today, I had a chat with uh, Cheshwar Pajara, and he was saying, you know, anything over 250 is not going to be easy in the final innings, which is actually what you said last night, two, 250 won't be easy. Um, but you can see India getting more than 250 ahead. If they have a, a decent mm. morning uh, with Kohli at the crease, you, you can see the chase being 350. It's possible. It's not, it's not mm. impossible that England could be looking at 350, yeah. possibly even more. So mm. uh, it, it, it's, it, it, England, yeah. England, to me, seemed up, up against it after three days. But we have seen in this series, mm. it has fluctuated. Wickets have fallen quickly. We, well, we saw two in and over after... You know, I mean, it was amazing, wasn't it? They took the new ball, and the first ball with the new ball, Rohit Sharma obliged by hitting a long lot out towards a deep fine leg, and then Bajara out in the same over. So that just shows you how quickly that it can change uh, with the ball. But 
mm, sort of cricket yeah. logic and you know just looking at the surface and Coley's determination and uh, and finally the fact I think it is going to be sunny tomorrow we've been sort of promised sun for for so long the fact that it is going to be sunny mm. tomorrow and warm at the Oval you just think yeah batting day enough of a batting day for India to make today count and that to me seems mm. to be where you know sort of most cricket logic points in this test match. It's great to see the work of cricket clubs across the country trying to grow the game and reach out to their local communities. And that is exactly what I feel cricket club are doing in the Crawley area after receiving a grant from LV Insurance and the ECB's One Million Fund for Runs Community Initiative. The club are using the money to start up new All Stars and Dynamos programmes offering free faces to socially deprived children in the local community. As one of the hardest hit areas by the pandemic, free cricket sessions will give an outlet to children in the area. With the support allowing the club to bring in professional coaching assistants, their aim is to recruit 50 young people across the two programmes. And well done to Ifield Cricket Club and LV Insurance and the ECB's One Million Fund for Runs campaign. Mysterious day in a way, wasn't it? It felt like a bowling day. Uh, it felt like it was sort of overcast and, and a little bit dark and the, the floodlights were on. The England bowls had a reasonably new ball. I mean, I don't know, 20 overs old or something. Uh, it certainly had a bit of shine on it. Actually, bowl was quite like a ball, which is 20 overs old, because you've been able to work out a polish on one side. It didn't really swing. I think uh, the, the Indian batsman, we should give the Indian batsman some credit. Now, I met a man this morning called Danny from Long Ditton Cricket Club, and I promised I'd give him a mention. Uh, he's of Indian extraction. And he said, now, look, I love your podcast. But he said, give us a bit of credit occasionally. You're too biased. I said, well, we try not to be. We try to be fair and, and give a kind of balanced account of the day's play. He said, oh, you know, give us a bit of credit. So I said, well, if the Indians play well today, we will. And so we should. And uh, I particularly liked um, the sort of abstinence of Rohit Sharma, not quite as abstinent as he was at Lords, where he, you know, battled and battled in, in really swingy, difficult conditions and played superbly and got 80 odd. But here, I noticed a couple of times he tried to drive the ball and the ball spooned in the air for a bit before falling short of mid on. And so after that, he didn't drive anymore. Unless it was a really full delivery, he kind of put that on the up drive, which he loves to play in uh, one day internationals against the white, well, he put that away. And he just waited for the back foot uh, opportunities and the occasional very full delivery to hit down the ground. So his uh, ability to, to show abstinence, uh, Kale Rahul's determination, obduracy, straight back. Uh, the lack of the ball moving was certainly hampering England. And perhaps for once, their bowling attack looked a bit one dimensional as well. But credit to the Indians and Pajara as well for, for sticking in and and really giving the uh, the Indians a strong platform there. Yeah, I mean, it's a really so shut up, Danny. You say yeah, about, so, uh, so Danny, so Danny, put that in your in your pipe and remember it, okay, <laughs> Danny from Long Ditton. Yeah, well, listen, I, before before I reply to what you're talking about, the in, in, England bowlers, I'm going to say something to Danny that we 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 I think this podcast we we look at it from an England perspective because we we you know that's who we focus on most of the time you know wherever they're playing we, you know we, we it's an it's an England focused podcast but I totally disagree uh, with him saying we do not give India credit we we are I'd say we're pretty impartial I mean we I I, I predict India would win the series for goodness sake uh, at the start of it. And, you know, we've given them masses of credit and that, you know, they have a very fine side. We've, we've talked in the past about whether they, this could be, you know, the Indian decade in terms of, you know, dominating world cricket and the, the, all the talent they've got. And so, um, yeah, Danny, put, put, put that in your pipe and smoke that bit. Uh, but um, England's bowlers, I mean, they had a good attack probably for the first day pitch, but not such a good attack for the third day pitch. You know, when it, when it does just flatten out a bit, it is a bit samey, and they, there were times today when perhaps they did need someone like Mark Wood to try to do what eventually sort of did happen with Rohit Sharma, you know, you know have that short attack into Sharma and, and get him to play an injudicious shot. And in the end, he, he did from a short, although, you know, it, it, it was a bit of a long hot, really. You, you probably got wickets like that in your career with, with, with balls Plenty. like that, and they'll, they'll feel a bit of a bonus, won't they? Yeah. And to get, Alan Lamb. I got Alan Lamb. I got Alan Lamb. I got Alan Lamb. I got Alan Lamb. I like that. I, mean, I loved it. Oh, I loved it. It was beautiful. He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, I'm not. I'm not surprised. But but you know, it, anyway, the the point is they they lacked that that point of difference today. It's, you know, that someone like Mark Wood yeah. uh, gives them. And 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 it, I I thought England stuck at it really well. I mean they in the, it was a real tussle in that morning session. What an arm wrestle it was uh, before lunch and really skillful batting. It was it was disciplined bowling as well. And there were plays and misses. There was a drop catch, another one from from Rory Burns at, at second slip. So Rohit was was reprieved twice. And you know whatever you say about the Rohit innings, and it was fine. You know Burns will be in that dressing room. You know, mulling on that. You know, you, you, any fielder obviously hates dropping catches. The point is, every fielder dropped a catch. You'd have dropped plenty in your your first class career, yours. And sometimes it would cost a few, and sometimes it would cost loads. And Rory Burns catches, you know, cost quite a lot. Uh, six, he was on Rohit, and thirty one, and he went on to make a one hundred and twenty seven. So, you know, those were those were sort of key moments uh, in the day. But yeah, the England attack did look a bit. Sammy, but I thought they—I thought they really stuck at it. I mean, you know, they India never sort of got away, but it was a—it was a real sort of—it was—it was sort of relentless bowling against uh, remorseless batting uh, today. And India, India have definitely well, they've more than edged it. They, they you know, they to me, they are ahead in the game. And your uh, who's winning graphic uh, says that, and that's, that's that's my feel as well. It's not impossible for England uh, from here, but logic points in that Indian uh, direction, as like you. I, d I don't see a draw. I mean, I, I could see a scenario where there would be a draw, but I don't think that's. I don't think that's likely. I think one of these two sides will will win the game, and from here, you'd have to say most likely India, or more likely India. I'll give you a story about a drop catch. A drop catch uh, uh, by my, by me. It was in a club match, Ealing against an Australian touring team, and uh, I dropped this Aussie on naught, and he got a hundred. And it was an absolute sitter, you know, it was a shocking miss. Uh, I was 16 years thing? old, mid off, easy catch, dropped it, 16 years old. And I was awarded the clown of the day at the end, which involved drinking something called an earthquake. And an earthquake was six shots. So vodka, brandy, whiskey, gin, rum, and something else topped up with grapefruit juice. And I had to down it in one. And I've never so, felt so ill in my life. And dropped that many catches since, actually. Uh, I have a few, but they were a bit harder than that one. So, you know, don't drop a catch against an Australian touring team when a bloke's on north. Uh, so he gets on, goes on to get 100, is my I thought you were lesson of, for the day. I thought you were going to go on and say, it, it, you know, it was Alan Border or uh, you know, it was Dean Jones or, so, or someone like that who was, who was over here playing. But uh, yeah, well, no, no, no one, that's the point, no one means to drop a catch. And actually, the three catches that, that went down, because Chris Wokes had one at, at mid-on off row hit, he didn't seem to pick up. And he went one way and then went back the other. And by the time he'd sort of located where it was going, the catch, sort of the ball fell just short of him. If he picked it up straight away, he might have been able to take the catch. But the point is, is that actually all three of those were in exactly the same position. So second slip and then mid-on. So I wonder whether, you know, there is an issue with seeing. It, it, it was a sight issue. Uh, although, having said that, Burns did get away to his right-hand side. He did seem to pick it up. He just didn't He didn't get a firm hand to it, and it, it went away. It would have been a straightforward catch, absolutely straightforward catch uh, for third slip. But England didn't have one in there, and, and the chance went away, and, and, and Rohit uh, profited. Uh, what, what about uh, Pajara today? Uh, a really valuable partnership. He was talking afterwards about the importance of partnerships, and that's what we saw from from India today. That opening stand as well just looks solid. Just looks more solid mm. than, than than most of, of what England can produce in this series. I know I know Hamid and and Burns produced that opening partnership at heading. Actually, that just shows you the value of them. That they 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 really do. They they deflate the opposition and they really lift your own dressing room. But Rahul and Rohit Sharma, and then Sharma and Pajara stand of a hundred. And, and 53s. It, it was it was those partnerships that just wore England down today. What, what did you make of the uh, Rahul wicket? Because he he clearly mm. did not think he'd hit it. I mean, England went up. They appealed. You know, they absolutely convinced Anderson was actually by the by the stumps by the time he realised the umpire had, had given it not out. England just thought that's out. We'll, we'll review it. But e even after Kale Rahul had seen the technology with that huge spike, he said, "No, I I just did not hit that bizarre one." Oh, it was a bizarre one. I, I actually went down to the Hawkeye truck afterwards where they've got 
all the tools. They've got the, the slow mo cameras. They've got the various angles. They've got the the snickometer. You know the uh, the sound uh, system as well to to check and match with the pictures. Uh, and I looked at the various angles, and they really moved them through very slowly. And there was no sign of the bat touching the pad at all at any point in the shot from the beginning right to the end. So he just imagined that it was a totally legitimate decision. Ball hit bat. There was a spike, and uh, bat didn't hit anything else. So what he can, uh, I mean, it just shows, doesn't it? You know, batsmen always think when you say to batsmen, "Do you know they hit it? Do you know that you hit it every time?" And they say, "Yes, I always know when I hit it." He didn't know, and he thought he hadn't, and he got it wrong, and he looked bad you know, taking umbrage with the umpire like that. I mean, just, you've got to go, I'm afraid. It just looks terrible. And you're never going to, you're never going to win that one, are you? You're not going to get an umpire to overturn his decision once the technology's had it had its go. So a bit foolish from tell the whole there. Yeah, I mean, I suppose he would say, well, the umpire didn't give me out. The umpire thought the ball had, uh, you know, the bat had flicked the pad. But as you say, it was actually quite clear fairly early on that the bat did not flick the pad at all. It could only be been ball on bat taking the edge England absolutely convinced and the technology uh backed them up and the, the third umpire had absolutely no no choice to, but to, to to give it out but it was it was really really weird to see uh, KL Rahul still saying no I, I just didn't hit that but of course last weekend you remember Coley um was given out caught behind and was about to walk off and Rahani at the other end said are you, are you sure Sure you've hit that and actually Cody mm, thought yeah. you hit it and was about to walk off and he hadn't hit it so you know I mean I whenever I play club cricket admittedly the, the, the bowling is a bit slower I think you know every single time you know I think sort of 999 times out of a thousand I knew I'd hit it but perhaps you know this level the ball nipping through zinging through 85 miles an hour you know it, it's completely different everything happens uh, so much quicker and the batters out in the middle you know don't know uh, they've hit it anyway Rahul was out for uh, 46. Then we had that stand, and then we had the the, the two wickets in the over. Uh, Rohit Sharma, we're going to give him our in with heart L L V in with heart award today for that, you know, for for resisting, for showing that uh, you know real determination, mm. and uh, yeah, and, and, play and within also, himself. You know, it, yeah, also his sort of career path as well. Actually, it's funny, but I, I I chatted to him at the last Oval Test match which India played here four years ago, three four years ago. And I remember talking to him then and saying, what, you know, what are your ambitions? You've been batting at six, you know, you're sort of in and out of the team. Was it? And he was like, well, yeah, I really want to be a test player and I really want to be, you know, taken seriously. And I don't want to just be a one day international star who makes, you know, two hundreds for fun. I want to be a serious test player. And it was good to hear that from him. And he spent the last two or three years trying to find his way, trying to establish himself at the top of the order. And it's only really fairly recently, isn't it, that they've decided to, to put him in at number one through that Australian series and, and then obviously this one. And he's delivered. And uh, he's looked as good as anybody in the world, hasn't he? I mean, he's got out a couple of times early, but generally he's looked immaculate. I mean, is there anybody more sort of calm and seem to have so much time in world cricket? He, he's just a, an immaculate player who plays in an orthodox fashion, but a very attractive way. And it worked hard. And of course, he's averaging 46. So he's got a fantastic uh, record in test cricket, but only recently to really establish himself as an opener. And I think now you know, you'll go back to India thinking, wow, this is a breeze after having battled his way on these pitches. <laughs> he probably gets three noughts in a row if he goes back to <laughs> India. But I mean, you know, he's, yeah, yeah. He's, you, know, you know, it's like, but it's perverse, isn't it, batting? But He's looked, he's looked really solid in this series because this was a challenge for him because he's, he's, he's not done particularly well mm. in, in, in England. And this was a series of a challenge. He's worked on it. He's played with great discipline. I thought that was a, a real, one of the real elements of his, of his game today and throughout the series. He's played with so much at, at discipline. But of course, because he does have that elegant as well and beautiful timing you you you, it, you don't you don't mind him in a way sort of blocking because uh, even some of his blocks look elegant and they, and they look they look so so resolute uh, but, he, but he also unfills in, in magnificent strokes as well and that brilliant way to, as you said brilliant way to to go to 100 with that six over long on you're right kevin peterson did try it in a test match against south africa at Edgbaston and he failed he tried to go to his 100 but actually perverse in the same game i don't know if you remember this paul collingwood also uh, was in the 90s and did go 
to his 100 with a six off Paul Harris. Peterson didn't clear mid on, but Collingwood did. There was this, I, I, I sort of, what, it sort of felt like there was a bit of one-upmanship at the time. You know, you, well, you can't do it, but I can. <laughs> it, was, it was one of those sort of lovely yeah. moments with moments within the game, but I remember that. But, but you know, it's, it's a great way to go to 100, isn't it? And you're right, take, taking on uh, long on. Um, wonderful from well, uh, Rohit Sharma yeah. today. Um, just one or two, one or two uh, uh, bits and pieces. Uh, talking about the England attack, we've touched on that. Uh, Craig Overton today only bowling nine overs in the day after six wickets at Headingley. Uh, you know, Joe Root had the, if you like, the sort of in quotes Sam Curran problem uh, earlier in the series, and today he, he sort of had the the Craig Overton problem. He seemed a bit out of sorts with himself. Overton actually, when he was he, although you know he was fully committed because he, he chased one of his own deliveries didn't he to the boundary and, and knocked it back inside the rope and then had to go off the field for a little bit of treatment uh afterwards but craig overton today yeah just one of those days isn't it sometimes i mean i can't really explain it actually it's just some days you run up and it kind of comes down a bit short and the bloke whacks it and then you try and overcompensate and it's a half volley and you just can't get any rhythm and Maybe it's this, uh, you know some gr grounds you just don't feel comfortable. Look at Ishan Charma at Headingley; it was terrible. Um, so I mean, there's there's nothing kind of much sort of in the in the geography of this ground to upset bowlers. But some days it's like that, you know. Daisy. Some days you do it. Some days yeah. you don't. Maybe that's his nickname. Yeah, and well, today India did, and you know they they've got a solid base. Two days left in this Test match. And India 171 ahead. Um, how many do you think they're going to get in the Just to sort of pick a figure 270, out. What do you 270 lead. 270 lead. Another 100. Right. Um, fingers I'm, I'm crossed. Right. And that will be an absolute stormer of a game, if that's the case. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go for more than that. I think they'll get a few more. Yeah. But um, okay. our, predict our predictions have been wrong so far in this series. But, you know, another, I mean, another in interesting day today, perhaps not the not the thrills and spills of the first two days, but it has set up uh, a potentially fascinating uh, denouement uh, to this test match. And the sun is going to shine tomorrow and it's going to be hot and perhaps right. Cody's going to get 100 tomorrow. <laughs> but at least, at least, yeah, we're going to get great weather. We're going to get a positive result. I'm confident of that. One of these teams is going to go 2-1 up uh, to Old Trafford. And we'll be back to report on it uh, tomorrow evening at this time on this podcast. Dum -de -de -dum -de -de -dum -de -dum.